Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to welcome back Oregon State Representative Peter Buckley. Good to see you again, Peter. Thanks, Rick. All right, so congratulations on your pending retirement, if you will. You, it's you it's always straight when people say congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> but, um, uh, I, I made a decision that I won't be running again in the, the 2016 election. I still have a year left mm -hmm. of my sixth term. Yeah, uh, wow. And uh, what I like to, to, to kind of frame it as my, uh, my youngest son was in kindergarten when I started. He'll be a senior in high school next year. That's exciting. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend that last year uh, uh, with him uh, before he heads off to college. I'm going to stay in, in Ashland yeah. for that. So. Well, that's, that's very cool. I mean, you know, whether it's, whether it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's congratulations no matter how you look at it. <laughs> you know, I know, I know you, you have other plans as well, and, and we'll get to that in a moment. What do you think in your, in your 12 years, what are you most proud of that you accomplished in the legislature? I have a proud, I'm very proud of the way our state held together and, and built out of the Great Recession. Uh, particularly the work that we did in the legislature to not only uh, balance the budget on time during very, very uh, difficult circumstances, but do it in a way with the priorities that the state needed to, in order to recover. And now we're starting to experience that recovery. We still have a lot of, of ways to go. We still have far too many families living in poverty. Uh, we still have uh, much too high tuition in higher education. We still have ways to go for our state, but I think we are moving in the right direction, and that's what the, I'm most proud of. Okay, and what about uh, this next session come, coming up in February? It's a shorter session, of Correct. course, but it'll be your last session. Correct. Uh, what, what do you think is going to be some of the issues we're going to be discussing? What do you look to see? Well, the, number one, do a, we have to rebalance the budget because we have a two-year budget, and then during that short session, we have a chance to rebalance it uh, with all the information that we receive in terms of what's the caseload for the Oregon Health Plan, what, how are mental health programs going, how are all the different programs going. So that's the major focus. I know there'll be discussion on the minimum wage because that's also heading towards the November ballot, possibly. Uh, there'll be discussion on climate change issues. Uh, uh, Oregon is considering a cap and trade type of program similar to what California has and China is going to have. Uh, this actually proved to be quite successful in reducing carbon, but also investing in projects like water projects, or even affordable housing. Uh, the impacts of global climate change can be addressed on a local level through a cap and trade program. So I'm looking forward to those discussions as well. Okay, very good. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have much more in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Oregon State Representative Peter Buckley. So, Peter, uh, one of the things when, when I talked to, to your colleague and friend, State Senator Alan Bates, about, about your pending uh, stepping down from the legislature, he said he would like to see you try and be the president of SOU, your, your national resident. Is mm -hmm. that something you might be interested in? Well, I have a, a strong passion for Southern Oregon University, and, I, and I've uh, been privileged to represent it in the legislature and work hard on behalf. Uh, Bates suggested this idea a couple years ago he when, did. when it looked like there was going to be transition. And well, I've had conversations uh, with, with him and others about it. And if the board's willing to um, entertain an application from a non-academic, mm -hmm. uh, that's the board's choice. And, sure. and I'd be very interested if they were interested in doing that. Yeah, and I know you, you know a lot of people on the uh, on that board, of course, mm -hmm. and so that would be something that might, might, you know, you never know what could happen. Sure. What, what other possibilities are you looking into now that you're You know, I'm work? looking at different foundation work. Uh, there are foundations around the state that have uh, uh, very aggressive uh, um, policies in climate change issues and education issues, and those are my two passions that I want to follow as I leave the legislature. What can I do to, to help education in our state? What can I do to help address climate change? Those are the two major issues I still see facing our state. Okay, we, we talked a little bit about the upcoming short session in Correct. February before, but I, what about marijuana? Obviously, there's so much that still there needs is to be so ironed much. out, if that's the right way. Very much so. And, and the, uh, uh, the Measure 91 committee will be meeting throughout the February session as well. And we're trying to kind of track what the OLCC is doing in terms of the licensure, see how that's progressing. Uh, we have major issues around revenue collection as a cash-only business and how that's going to operate with uh, when taxes start to be collected on recreational marijuana sales. And then and there's the whole question about uh, whether marijuana can be sold, both medical and recreational, from the same facility or not. Right now, LCC is saying no, we're going to be separate facilities. There's a lot of discussion about maybe, maybe they could be in the same facility. How might that work? And then, of course, the issue of water and the issue of electricity in, in mm -hmm. regard to marijuana grows, and also the impact that marijuana grows are having on different areas of the state. Uh, I'm, I'm very concerned of the kind of Wild West mentality that we want, I need, think we need to tamp down. The OCC wants to have no limits on licenses. It's kind of like wide open. Mm -hmm. I disagree. I think there should be limits on licenses. In fact, Colorado recently has put a limit on growing license for commercial growers because they have so many people that are trying to get into this market. And I think Oregon should be smart about it. We should go on a step-by-step -step basis so it's not just a free-for-all, that we actually have a professional, well-regulated marijuana industry. 
Okay, well, I, I want to do when I get a question regarding Veterans Day. It's, it's obviously today, and, and we're going to go over, but I do want to ask this. Uh, Victory Place, we heard an announcement about that in the Rogue Valley uh, yesterday. And, and how is Oregon treating our veterans? Do we need to be doing more in the legislature we, we, or statewide? We, we, all, we always need to be doing more. Uh, you know, Oregon has a good record, in the, I think, in the legislature, both in the House and the Senate. We have veterans committees that focus passionately on, on the areas of concern to veterans and their families. And we've made some good progress in regards to support systems to making sure people have communication on what benefits are available for vets. vets. But housing is huge still and, and access to, to the care that vets will access when they need it, uh, that's also something we'd always move forward on. We have a whole generation of vets in our state now that we need to support as, as they come back into civilian life and we can always do more than we need to. Right, very good, Peter. Good to see you. Thank Thanks very you. much. Appreciate it. Stay with us. We'll be right back.